Yeah, I see that. I'm looking that way. Look kind of like monsterish. Put some M and M's in there. <laughs> Seems that it's seven oh seven. Uh, we might as well get going here. I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, first agenda item is introduction to new board members. Bob. Good evening. My name is Bob Hill. I'm the county development director, and we, uh, Brookings County Commission, has selected three new members to the zoning board, and we wanted to welcome them officially. The first one's Neil Truyan from District 3A. He's over here. Next one's Brian Gatsky from District 4. And the last one is Daryl Storhog, and he's an alternate. And I think he, we got him over there. So we want to welcome you on behalf of the Brookings County Commission and my department. And uh, you all met Richard and Ray Lynn. They're, they're the main, my main planning side of the house. I do emergency management also. So welcome, and it's back to you, Mr. Chairperson. All righty. Uh, we'll start off with roll call. All right. We'll uh, do a roll call with who's online and who's here in person. So Bartley. Present. McHugh. Here. Gatsky. Here. Dietrich. Here. Kleinjohn. Here. Vanderwall. Here. Troyan. Here. Jensen. Erickson. Here. Starhog. Here. And Ford. Here. One thing I'll just, everyone's got a, has a mic, if I may, just a second here. Just, there's a little button, there's a bar under your microphone. Just tap that, and if the green light comes <coughs> on, your mic is on when you want to speak. And when you don't want to speak, shut it off so we don't get any extra background noise here. So, and that's all that I have. Thank you. Agenda item number three, approval of minutes. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Vanderbilt. Second. Second by Bartley. Richard, would you call roll? Bartley. Aye. McHugh. We'll come back here. Gatsky. Here. Aye. Dietrich. Aye. Klein John. Aye. Vanderwall. Aye. Troyan. Aye. Erickson. Aye. McHugh. Aye. And Ford. Aye. Motion pa minutes pass. Agenda item number four. Items to be ad added to the agenda by commission members or staff. Does anybody have anything? I don't have anything additional, sir. We just during my staff report. Okay. Uh, number, invitation for citizens to schedule a time on the commission agenda for an item not listed. Anybody have anything? Seeing none. Disclosure of conflicts of interest, relationships to applicant or ex parte communication. Seeing none. Approval of agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Klein, John. Second. Second by Vanderwall. McHugh. Mike. Aye. Thank you. Gatsky. Aye. Dietrich. Aye. Klein John. 
Aye. Vanderwall. Aye. Troyan. Aye. Erickson. Aye. Bartley. Aye. And Ford. Aye. Motion passed. I now call this meeting to order. I would like to welcome those in attendance at tonight's meeting. The Brookings County Planning Commission is a nine member commission whose function is to recommend approval or disapproval of land use plans, zoning ordinances, subdivision plats, and amendments thereof, Brookings, thereof to the Brookings County Commission. The commission makes its recommendation based upon the adoptive comprehensive plan for the physical, physical development of, un, of the unincorporated areas of Brookings County. As a matter of policy, all motions are to be made to positive. After a motion is moved and seconded, it is open to debate. The supporting, those supporting the motion shall in turn give their reasons. Those opposing the motion shall in turn give their reasons. After everyone has been given a chance to be heard, the commission shall recommend approval or disapproval based on the testimony and information presented. A simple majority vote of a quorum of members of the Planning and Zoning Board in attendance is required to forward the recommendation. Agenda item 2021, Plat 002, Plat of Lot 9 of Ramlow Shore subdivision in government lot four in section 21 township 112 north range 47 west of the fifth primary in Brookings County, South Dakota. Is there a motion? Motion by Diedrich. Second. Second by Klein, John. Richard, would you read the staff report? Yes, 2021 plat 002. The Ramlow family is planning off lot nine in Ramlow Shore subdivision. Preliminary plat was approved on May 1st, 2001 by the Brookings County Planning and Zoning Commission. And the final plat is being submitted when they sell a lot. The lot contains 22,600 square feet that meets the lake park density area and yard regula regulation for uh, lakefront lots. This is the plat here. The plot, plat outlined in black here uh, shows the width and the length, uh, utility easements up front, width of the road. It just shows on the beacon map with the overlay on it, shows the lot number nine in between the other lots here that's um, is finally up for sale or been sold. Just the other beacon map just showing the this lot right here um, is the one that's being platted. And that's all that I have. Is the applicant here? Would they come forward for questions from the board? Applicant is not here this evening. Okay. We will now open the public portion of the hearing. Is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is for this? Seeing and hearing none. Is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is against this? Seeing and hearing none, we will now close the public portion here. Is there any additional comments or questions from members of the board? Seeing and hearing none, Richard, would you call for a vote? Gatsky. Yes. yes. Dietrich. Yes. Klein John. Aye. Vanderwall. Aye. Troyan. Yes. Erickson. Aye. Bartley. Aye. McHugh. Aye. Motion passes. Oh, Chad? Did I call you? No. Aye. Now the motion passes. We will now convene as the Brookings County Board of Adjustment. The Board of Adjustment is a nine member board which has the power to hear requests, variances, conditional use, appeals of non ministerial decisions to the zoning officer. 
The concurring vote of two thirds of the full board membership of the board, six votes is necessary for approval of a variance or an appeal of the zoning officer. The concurring vote of a simple majority of those board members present and voting is necessary for approval of a conditional use permit. Of a conditional use permit. In accordance with Robert's rules of order, we require a motion to approve a request before the request can be debated. As a matter of policy, all motions are to be made in a positive. The board under specific powers granted to it by the state shall authorize variances from the zoning requirements where special conditions existing on the land will result in unnecessary hardships for the applicant. Financial disadvantage to the property owner shall not constitute proof of an unnecessary hardship. Agenda, agenda item 2021, variance 002. Steve and Eileen Scherer have made an application 2021 variance 002 to the Brookings County Board of Adjustment for a variance Article 4, District Requirements, Chapter 4.03, LP, Lake Park District, Section 4.03.03, Density area and yard regulation, minimum front yard and minimum, minimum side yard. The property is described as lot 37, DeBoer's Lake Tatankaha, West Subdivision in the Southeast 1 4th, Section 7 Township, 111 North Range 51W, Oakwood Township, located at 55 Oakwood Shoreland Drive, Bruce, South Dakota 57220. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Vanderwall. Second. Second by Brian. Gatsky. Nope. Richard, would you read the staff report? Yes, 2021 variance 002. Applied for a side yard and front yard roadside variance to build a 14 feet, 8 inch wide by 28 feet, 8 inches long garage addition to be used for boat storage on their cabin at Lake Oakwood. Proposed garage, garage addition would be 18 feet, eight inches from the road, uh, one feet, six inches from the side property line on the east end of the garage, and five feet from the side property line on the west end. Uh, the required setback is 25 feet from the road and eight feet from the side property line. The lot is irregular shaped with the width of 66.6 .6 feet on the west side and 63.21 feet on the lake side. And the lot is 80 feet long on the north side and 112 feet long on the south side. Mr. Shear was granted a variance on April 4th, 2000 to build the house in their current location, 21 feet from the road and 35 feet from the highest known watermark. And the cabin sits above the 10 feet above the lake on the above the water on the lake side. And lake lots and cabins have existed on Lake Titankaha, otherwise commonly known as Lake Oakwood since the 1930s and 40s prior to the zoning regulation requirements. DeBoer's Lake Titankaha West Subdivision was originally platted in 1984 and replatted in June of 2003 when the original road was vacated and relocated. The adjoining landowners were not notified and some have sent in written comments stating they have no objections <coughs> to the variance requests, which I'll read here shortly. Public notices were published in the Brookings Register on February 16th and 23rd, 2021, and the Volga Tribune on February 18th and 25th, 2021. Letters were sent to the adjoining landowners and the Oakwood Township Chairman and Clerk. There's the variance application. This is their site plan with the survey with their proposed garage addition right here onto their, this is the current house and garage. This is their yard and they have a yard, yard shed right there. Proposed garage would come off the end of the, even with the end of the existing garage, 15 feet, six inches. And this is where it would be one foot, six, six inches from the side property line, come out 28 feet. And this is where it would be five feet from the property line, 18 feet, eight inches from the road. And as you can see, the, the property line goes pie shaped, so it gets wider as you go to the south. I'm going to call it south, it's southeast, I guess, or southwest, but. So the existing garage is like 21 feet, and by the time you get over here on the proposed garage, it's pretty pretty close to the same distance that this garage is here that the proposed garage would be to the property line. So 
There's some building plans here showing of the footprint of it. This is what it would look like with the garage roof line going up, a little eyebrow roof coming off to the north. Side view from the south. Proposed construction drawing. This is a letter received from an adjoining landowner. And I can reread that during the uh, public hearing portion that there, we had received. They had uh, sent this into the zoning office earlier. This is a beacon map. The red area shows a floodplain. Um, it is, would, it would have to meet floodplain requirements, um, but it is out of the floodplain. It uh, needs to be, will be corrected here with FEMA updates or FEMA map if in the near future. They're working on that now. But yeah, it is 10 feet out of the water at the east end of the, the cabin here. You can see here how the, the lot kind of gets wider as it goes south, narrower right here and wider down here as it goes. Here's without the floodplain on there. There's some pictures. This is looking, I'm gonna call it north looking south. The wheel is that would be at the west edge of the proposed garage addition. And you'd see this blue garage here would stick out farther than what the addition, new addition would. This is looking from the west, looking to the east towards the lake. That would be the um, <coughs> south side of the proposed garage right there. This is looking from the west, looking towards the east, towards the north side of the garage property with a walkthrough going up to the house. Two existing garages right there. This is looking from the south, looking north, just off the road here a little ways. Uh, kind of, I don't you can see how the road angles there. That is the west edge of the proposed garage. This is looking from the west, looking towards the, towards the lake. This is, would be the southwest corner of the garage here. Uh, the property line, it's, uh, the stake is not here, I guess, but you can see it. Uh, from here over, it would be five feet where the property line would be. This would be the east corner where it would be one foot six inches from the property line. This is looking from the east, looking back towards the west. Um, this would be the southeast corner where it would be the closest to the property line, looking back up the hill here. Um, I believe that stake right here would be the stake marking the property line. This is just looking from the south, looking north on that, so it would come out even with the existing garage. So, and that's all that I have. Is the applicant here? Would they come forward? Have a seat and please clearly state your name. Hey, my name is Steve Shear. Uh, do you have anything to add to Richard's staff report? Pardon me? Anything to add to the staff report? Uh, not really, except that it's um, two inches. It's like one foot eight inches would be the closest point. To his lot, to my neighbor's lot line. 1.6 inches. 1.6 feet, excuse me. Okay. All right. Yeah, if, if you want to just stay there for a second here, uh, I'll open the public portion of the hearing quick. Uh, is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is for this? I'll just read the letter we received from Mr. the adjoining landowner, Mr. Agabret. Dear Brookings County Planning and Zoning and or Lake Oakwood Lakes Development Association, Steve and Eileen Shear recently bought for our, to our attention they would like to add a boat storage addition onto the southeast side of their garage of their lake cabin at 55 Oakwood Shoreline Drive, Bruce, South Dakota. The Shear family informed us they would be seeking a zoning variance to decrease the setback from our adjoining property, which is at 54 shoreline oakwood shoreline drive we would agree to the minimum setback of 1.6 feet at the closest point and to five feet at the farthest point we also asked that the shears would install a rain gutter on the roof of the new garage addition with a downspout from the rain gutter emptying towards the lake and not on our property the shears also agreed if we decide to build a <coughs> garage addition in our future they would allow us to build it within three feet of our lot line it's best regards rick and Becky Agabret. I also had a um, comment that was phoned in. 
February 23rd. Dennis DeBoer called the zoning office at 2.43 p.m. regarding 2021 variance 002, stating he has no objections to the side yard variance and does not want the garage addition to be closer to the road as it would obstruct the vision looking up, looking down, up or down the road. He would like it at the proposed, keep it at the proposed garage at the same length as the existing garage. Dennis DeBoer. And those are all the comments that I have. Is there any more for it? Seeing none, is there any opponents? Seeing and hearing none, I will now close the public portion of the hearing. Is there any additional comments or questions from members of the board? What are your plans inside this garage? Are you... No, it's going to use it for a bolt storage. Are you finishing anything or... No. Uh, I'm going to guess that the length of the garage <clears throat> is necessary to get a boat in it. I mean, if we're to... It's not, it's not the garage door isn't tall enough. This is going to be a 10 foot tall door, 12 by 10 door. No, I'm talking about the depth. The depth? No, the garage isn't deep enough either. What's, what's the depth right now that you're planning? The garage, 24 feet. Okay, this so be, it takes. This would be about 28 feet, 28 foot 8. Okay, it takes just about 24 foot for a boat on a, on a trailer. That's always tight, I think. So the 28 is for the use of a boat storage, you need that. Yeah. Daryl, if we required sheetrock on the property of the sideline before for a fire barrier when we're that close to the... Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea. I, my thoughts that. are that is really, really close to the property line. And if the other guy wants to build within three feet of the property line, that leaves you four and a half feet between your two houses. I don't know if I would be comfortable with my house that close to somebody else's just for fire. If either one of them houses started on fire, there'd be no way of stopping it. They'd both burn. I think they're supposed to be 8 or 10 feet apart, aren't they? It would be 16 feet, 8 feet from each property line, yes. But I do have sheet rock fire code added in the findings of facts. Where we get that. Well, you're ahead of me then. That's really encroaching on your neighbor's property rights when you get that close to the property line. Specifically, he would have to come in and ask for a variance to get to the three foot that he asked you to agree to. And at that point in time, it could be rejected by a future variance request simply because it's too close. Is essentially, yeah. I think, what you're saying, Daryl. You know, 16 is fine right now, now, but you're infringing upon his rights to do it in the future to ask for a variance if it wouldn't be granted for three feet. In other words, we can't guarantee that he'll get that with your request. Is there any sort of fire code that needs to be met when they're building? If, like it's, that, if it's that close, we can ask for things like the sheetrock fire barrier between. And as long as that's in, then it meets fire code for having a building within, if that's the case. I don't know about foot. that. I don't, yeah. That would be up to the insurance, each individual insurance. Okay. I don't think the county okay. has a fire code. There, that, that, we follow the 2015 building code, but we would went above and beyond and closer in where they're less than the eight-foot setback that we have required a fire stop be installed part of the construction when they're closer than eight feet. I, I guess I'm kind of with Daryl on the deal here is if we, if we approve this year agreement with your neighbor to let them come to within three feet is kind of null and void because we won't be able to approve that at all. 
Well, I don't think he's decided what he's going to do. He just, he just told me what his, plan, what his plans are. At one time, he was talking about... If it was an about, additional property owner in the future, if he sold yeah. to someone, it would... But still, we can't make that agreement work. They would still have to come in, either present owner or any future owner of the property, to come in to ask a short variance to get the three feet would be a tough one. Well, that all came about because he asked me a couple years ago about he was going to put a garage up, and he asked me how close I would let him come. And I said, well, you can come up within three feet. I don't care. And that's where that came from. What, what's the depth of your current garage? Pardon me? What's the depth of your current garage? 24 feet. Could you have added on to your current garage four no, feet? No, there's no way to do that. Adding four foot on to the current garage? Is the roof too low? Well, that's, I'd be getting too close to the road. Then. I'd be the same position I am now as far as being close to it. Would just the avoid, other end would be even closer. Yeah, it, it would just avoid the side yard is what it would do. So I guess we have to define what the hardship is. Well, the hardship is a setback from the property line. But that's why we're here. What about if you went to the other side of your garage? You have 17. I don't, I don't have enough room there. Well, you have 17.4 there where you only have. I think there's a, I think I seen a septic pump there, though. Okay. Good enough. Right there. In that picture right there, you can see the septic hyzer pipe. Well, you can tear your garage down and build a new garage centered. One point six inches is just a little too close to the property line, as far as I'm concerned. That's why these rules are in place is to protect the property owners next to you, whether it be the current owner or future owners in the future. And so it's it's definitely too close, in my opinion. I don't think we've ever gone this close, have we? No, not that I've been not since I've been on. I think probably four or five feet as close as we've ever gone. I think we went three and a half on one, and that I remember we specified the sheetrock for fire code mm -hmm. just with that one. Yeah, and there was no chance that the neighbor was ever going to build next to that, too. No, I think there was, well, I believe his septic system was placed on that side to prevent him from coming closer. Yeah. Do you know, is there anything that's preventing the Egerbrett's property from building in that area? No, not that I know. Of. Well, in the picture that we're seeing right here, is that a sewer pump out right there by that stake? Pardon me, no. That would be his. That's if that's a sewer water. pump out, that's the neighbors. Rural. That's the that's my uh, that's water rural right water. That's rural that's water. Rural water. In. Okay. Right. Is there any other additional comments or questions from members of the board? Just a question in the letter. They said they're supposed to, they'd like a, a downspout or a drain away. Do we have to specify that, or is that just part of the building permit, Richard? No, we have never specified which would, okay. where the water has to go. All right. Would you like to add that to the findings of the facts, or is that something you don't want to do? We have never specified okay. where the drainage goes on a property. That's a, okay. 
Is there any other additional comments or questions from members of the board? Seeing and hearing none, Richard, would you read the findings of the facts? All right, I'll read the findings in its entirety, then the other variances. Well, I'll just read the highlighted areas. I won't repeat and repeat the whole document all night long. Brookings County Zoning Variance 2021 BAR002, an application for the Zoning Commission acting as the Brookings County Board of Adjustment, a copy of the application being attached here too. Such application being made by Steve and Eileen Shear regarding the following real property. Lot 37, DeBoer's Lake, Kitankaha, West Subdivision in the east, one-fourth of Section 7, Township 111 North, Range 51 West, Oakwood Township. Located at 55 Oakwood Shoreline Drive, Bruce, South Dakota, 57220. After due notice, a public hearing has been held on the application on the second day of March 2021. Number one, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment hereby finding that the strict application of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance would produce undue hardship, that such hardship is not shared generally by other properties in the same zoning district or the same vicinity, that the authorizations authorization of such variance will not be of substantial detriment to adjacent property and the character of the district will not be changed by the granting of the variance and that the granting of the such variance is based upon reason, reasons of demonstrable and exceptional hardship as distinguished from variations for the purpose of convenience profit and caprice number two the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further finding that the condition or situation of the property concerned or intended use of the property is not so general recurring in nature as to make reasonable practicable the formulation of a general regulation to be adopted as an amended amendment to the zoning ordinance number three the brookings county board of adjustment further finding that the written application of the petitioner demonstrates that special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or buildings in the same district that literal interpretation of the provisions of the brookings county zoning ordinance would deprive the applicant of rights enjoyed by other properties in the same district under the terms of the ordinance that the special conditions and circumstances do not result from the actions of the applicant and that granting the variance requested will confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied by the ordinance to other lands structures or buildings in the same district number four the brookings county board of adjustment further finding that the reasons set forth in the application justify the granting of the variance that the variance is a minimum variance which will make possible and reasonable use of the land, building, or structure, that the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general purpose and the intent of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance, will not be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Number five, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further determines and conditions this variance upon the following special conditions or safeguards. A, shape and size of lot. B, DeBoer's Lake Titankaha subdivision was platted on October 30th, 1984 and replatted on October 10th, 2002. C. Firewall to be installed in the sidewalls and ceiling of the garage addition. The Brookings County Board of Adjustment, by at least two thirds vote of its full membership, hereby grants the above petitioner variance for the above de described real property as follows. Build a 14 feet 8 inch wide by 28 feet 8 inch long attached garage addition 18 feet 8 inches from the road and 1 feet 6 inches from the side property on the east end of the proposed garage and 5 feet from the property line on the west end of the proposed, proposed garage. This variance is specifically conditioned upon initial and continued compliance with all the conditions and safeguards in 5 above and upon compliance with all applicable provisions of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. <coughs> If approved, this Brookings County Zoning Director is authorized to issue any required building permits for construction consistent with the terms of this variance. Dated 2nd day of March, 2020. If this variance is not used within three years of the date granted, it shall be invalid. Dated the 2nd day of March, 2021. If that was actually one foot eight inches, do you want to change that? Instead of the one foot six, because it yes. was one that point six, wasn't it? Is one foot eight inches, Mr. Shear? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fine John. That's the closest, and it goes out to uh, five feet. Richard, would you call the vote? Dietrich. No. 
No. Vanderwall. No. Troyan. No. Erickson. No. Bartley. No. McHugh. No. Gatsky. No. No. And Ford. No. Motion fails. Want to sign these? I'll read the. the denied findings prepared and I can read those quick Kids in school. <laughs> Good. Great. All right, I'll read the denied findings here quick. Brookings County Zoning Variance 2021 VAR 002. <coughs> application have been filed with the Brookings County Zoning Commission acting as a Brookings County Board of Adjustment. A copy of the application being attached here to and incorporated herein by this reference. Such application be made by Steve and Eileen Shear regarding the following real property. Lot 37. DeBoer's Lake Titakaha, West Subdivision, the Southeast 14th, Section 7, Township 111 North, Range 51 West, Oakwood Township. Located at 55 Oakwood Shoreline Drive, Bruce, South Dakota, 57220. After due notice, a public hearing was held on the application on the second day of March 2021. Number one, on January 29th, Steve and Eileen Shear applied for a variance to build a 14 foot 8 by 28 feet 8 inch long garage addition 18 feet 8 inches from the road and 1.8 inches from the east side property line on the east end of the proposed garage and 5 feet from the side property line on the west end of the proposed garage. Number two of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance Article 4 Chapter 4.03 Lake Park District Section 4.0303 Density Area and Yard Regulations require an 8 foot setback from the side property line. The applicant requested a one foot eight inch and five foot setback from the side property line, which would require variance of six foot uh, four inches and three feet from the side property line and 18 eight inches from the road, which would be acquire a variance of six foot four inches from the road. Number four, the legal description of the property, which the variance was requested, is lot 37, Divorce Lake Titakaha West Subdivision, the southeast one fourth of section seven. Township 111 North, Range 51 West, Oakwood Township. Number five, the public hearing was scheduled to be held in the Brookings City County Government Center, 310 Chambers, 523rd Street, Brookings, South Dakota, on Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021, at 7 p.m. Number six, legal notices of the hearing were published on February 16th and 23rd, 2021, in the Brookings Register and the Volga Tribune on February 18th and 25th, 2021. All legal newspapers of Brookings County. The public hearing on on March second. Nine members. Of the Brookings County Board of Adjustment were present. The Brookings County Zoning Ordinance requires at least two thirds vote of its full membership, i.e., six votes, to approve a variance. Number eight, the property for which the variance is requested is located in Brookings County, South Dakota. Number nine, just states the Brookings County Zoning Articles. Zoning Ordinance Article 6, Administrative Section 6.04, Board of Adjustment Section 6.01, Establishment. Point 1 just goes through the, and number 10 goes through the 
zoning ordinances under the Board of Adjustment. I will not read those. Number 10, the real estate for which the applicant requested the variance is in the Lake Park Zone District. Number 12, following the testimony presented by the applicant and the proponents and the opponents, the Board of Adjustment voted, voted zero in favor. Voted zero in favor and nine opposed to approving the variance causing the motion to fail. Number 13, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment finds that the application should be denied because the applicant does not have a hardship as required by the ordinance. Number 14, Brookings County Board of Adjustments finds that the application should be denied because reasons set forth in the application do not justify the granting of the variance. Number 15, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment finds that granting of the variance would not be in harmony in the general spirit, purpose, or in the intent of this regulation. Would it be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare? Number 16, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment specifically finds that the granting of the variance allowing a one foot eight inch and five foot setback from the side property line, which would require a variance of six foot four inches and three feet from the side property line and eight feet, 18 feet eight inches from the road, which would require a six foot four inch variance from the road to raise safety concerns with traffic and adjoining structures. Number 17, the variance application for a variance is denied. Dated the second day of March, 2021. And your additions or corrections? Read the next agenda item, Mr. Chairman. Agenda item 2021, variance 003. Old Tree Farms LLC by Frito and Sonia Verpollen has made an application 2021, variance 003, to the Brookings County Board of Adjustment for a variance article 22, section 2201, concentrated animal feeding operation regulations. Concentrating animal feeding operation control requirements number six required setbacks and separation distance estab distance established residence the property is described as the south 1470 feet of the south west one fourth excluding the south 295 feet of the east 295 feet of the west 1,248 feet in Section 34, Township 110 North, Range 51W, Volga Township, located at 46, 316, 214th Street, Volga, South Dakota, 57071. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Vanderwall. Second. Second by Diedrich. Richard, would you read the staff report? Yes. 2021 Variance 003, Old Tree Farms LLC by Frito and Sonia Verpollen have applied for variances to be 1,760 feet from a residence located in the northeast one-fourth of Section 4, Township 109 North, Range 51 West, located to the south of his operation, a variance of 880 feet, and 2,265 feet from a residence located in the southeast one-fourth of Section 33, Township 111 North, Range 51 West, located to the west of his operation, which is a variance of 375 feet. Both residents are on established existing homesteads. 
The dairy was permitted as a Class B CAFO for 1,400 cows on April 7, 1998, prior to the current setback requirements. They were approved to expand from a Class B to a Class A CAFO with 2,540 animal units on April 5, 2011, and a Class A expansion to 3,155 animal units on January 3, 2017. And setback variance was approved in the past three expansions. Uh, adjoining landowners were notified and have sent in written comments stating they have no objections to the various requests which were attached to this report. Uh, letters were sent to the adjoining landowners, the Volga Township Chairman and Clerk, the Oslo Township Chairman and Clerk, the Brookings County Highway Department, and Kingbrook Rural Water. Public notices were published in the Brookings Register on February 16th and 23rd, 2021, and the Volga Tribune on February 18th and 25th, 2021. Would the applicant please oh, come? I'm not done yet. <laughs> Here is the variance application. This is a map providing by the um, engineers requesting uh, 1760. This would be from the closest residence, and which would be to the south right here, 1760 for the residence and 1675 for the well which is the well is right in close to the house right here not too far away from it, but this is the house right here which is at 1760 which did meet the requirements for a class b of 1760 feet um, they go to a class a the setback distance are, are larger so that's where the um, variance comes into effect at this is a 2640 going from that same residence. You can see the circle arches out a little more, goes beyond, encompasses the majority of the structures of the dairy versus the just hitting the tip of it right there. This is a um, letter from Jerry Nel Mr. Nelson, which owns this house and well right here, stating they have no objections to the variance request. Dated this 10th day of February 2021. This is a letter of agreement or saying they have no objections from um, Jerry Wynott. Uh, she owns the house to the west and pro well to the west of the property right over here, which is 2,265 feet away from the property. Yeah. And this is for the residential setback. Here's the beacon map just showing the Nelson property towards the southeast of the house, southwest of the dairy. This is the Wynot property just west of the dairy there. Just the beacon map showing the property. the house this is the Nelson residence located to the south this is the why not property located to the west there and that's all that I have thank you would the applicant please step forward when you sit down would you please clearly state your name uh, my name is Frito Fallen do you have any anything to add to Richard's report? No. Pretty good. Okay. Well, if you want to hang out there for a bit, uh, we'll just move along here. Uh, we'll open the public portion of the hearing. Is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is for this? It'll just be noted that letters were received from the adjoining landowners. And they were read earlier during my staff report. <sighs> Is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is opposed to this? Seeing and hearing none, we'll close the public portion of the hearing. Is there any additional comments or questions from members of the board? Uh, Jake Gilbertson, look at this. As far as the wells. No, he did not. It is not located in the zone B of the aquifer protection area, so the 
like for presence of greater materials is greater than um, 50 and 100 feet. And that will come out during the conditional use application through the soil borings. Okay. Thank you. Any other additional comments or questions from members of the board? Seeing and hearing none, Richard, would you read the findings of the facts? Yes, I will just read the highlighted areas as I just read the whole document in its entirety in the previous variance request. Brookings County Variance 2021 20, Application for variance, have them to file with the Brookings County Zoning Commission, acting as the Brookings County Board of Adjustment, a copy of the application being attached here too. Such application being made by Old Tree Farms by Frito and Sony Verpollen regarding the following real property. The south 1,470 feet of the southwest one fourth, except the south 295 feet of the east 290 feet, 95 feet of the west 1,248 feet, and section 34, Township 110 North, Range 51 West, Volga Township, located at 46316 214th Avenue, excuse me, 214th Street, Volga, South Dakota, 57071. After due notice, a public hearing have been held on the application on the second day of March, 2021. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further determines and conditions this variance upon the following special conditions or safeguards. Contingent upon approval of Conditional Use 2021 CU003. Letters from adjoining landowners stating they have no objections to the variance request. By at least two-thirds vote of its full membership and hereby grants the above petitioner variance for the above described real property as follows. Allow an existing Class A CAFO dairy and expansion to be approximately 1,760 feet from an established residence in the northeast one-fourth of Section 4. Township 109 North, Range 51 West, and approximately 2,265 feet from an established residence located in the southeast one-fourth of Section 33, Township 110 North, Range 50 West, 51 West. This variance is specifically conditioned upon initial and con continuing compliance with all the conditions and safeguards in 5 above, upon compliance with all applicable provisions of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. The Brookings, if approved, the Brookings County Zoning Director is authorized to issue any required building permits for construction consistent with the terms of this variance. If this variance is not used within three years of the date granted, it shall be invalid, dated the second day of March, 2021. Everybody good with the findings of the facts? Richard, would you call the vote? Vanderwall, <coughs> Troyan, aye, Erickson, aye, Bartley, aye, McHugh, aye, Gatsky, aye, Dietrich, aye, and Ford, aye. Motion passes. Agenda item 2021, variance 004, Old Tree Farms LLC by Frito and Sony Verpollen has made an application 2021, variance 004 to the Brookings County Board of Adjustment for a variance. Article 22, section 22.01, concentrated animal feeding operation regulations. Concentrated animal feeding operation control requirements number six, requirement setbacks and separation distance pipe private wells the property is described as the south 1470 feet of the southwest one fourth excluding the south 295 feet of the east 295 feet of the west 1248 feet in section 34 township 110 north range 51 w volga township located at 46316 214th street volga south dakota 57071 is there a motion so moved Motion by Diedrich. Second. Second by Vanderwall. Richard, would you read the staff report? 
Yes, 2021 variant 004, Old Tree Farms LLC by Frito and Sony Verpollen have applied for variance of 1,675 feet from a well located in the northeast one-fourth of Section 4, Township 109 North, 109 North, Range 51 West, located to the southwest of this operation, a variance of 965 feet, and 2,475 feet from a well located, located in the south east one-fourth of Section 33, Township 110 North, Range 51 West, to the west of his operation, a variance of 165 feet. The required setback distance is 2,640. Uh, a well in the northeast one-fourth of Section 4 is recorded on the South Dakota Department of Environment and Natural Resources Water Well Completion Report for the Township Section Range. A well located in the southeast one-fourth of Section 33 Township 110 North Range 51 West is not on the Department of Environment and Natural Resources Water Well Completion Report for that township section and range, meaning that the well was dug prior to the reporting requirement. Just some brief history of the CAFO again. It was a class permitted as a class B CAFO for 1,400 cows on April 7th in 1998 prior to the current setback requirements. It was a Approved for expansion from a class A to a class class B to a class A for 2,500 animal units on April 5, 2011, and for a class A expansion to 3,155 animal units on January 3rd, 2017. Adjoining landowners were notified and were sent in written comments stating they have no objections to the variance request, which were attached to this report. Letters were sent to the adjoining landowners, the Volga Township Chairman and Clerk. Oslo Township Chairman and Clerk, Workings County Highway Department, and the Kingbrook Rural Water. The public notices were published on February 16th and 23rd of the Brookings Register and the Volga Tribune on February 18th and 25th, 2021. There's the variance application. There's the well setbacks. Again, the circle going to 1760 from each location. This is a 2640 showing it just encompasses about the whole dairy. This is a letter from the adjoining landlord J Jerry Nelson stating he has no objections to the variance request for the existing uh, well. And Notification of the adjoining landowner, Jerry Wynott, stating she has no objections to the variance request for the existing well. Again, just the Beka map showing the location towards the dairy. This one's the adjoining landowner to the west. And just the Beka map aerial of the, of the dairy. And photos again of the the well is located right behind the deer, behind the house here, same way with both pictures. They're both the same, but it was hard to get a picture of just the well back in there, but they are they are there. And that's all that I have. Would the applicant step forward and state your name clearly again? Oh, my name is Frido Vapala. Do you have anything to add to Richard's report? No. Being none, I will now open the public portion of the hearing. Is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is for this? Seeing Mr. Chairman, just note that we received letters from the adjoining landowners to the south, uh, Jerry Nelson and or Mr. Nelson and Ms. Wynott, stating they have no variance or, or objections to the variance request. Thank you. I will now ask if there's anybody in the audience or on the phone that opposes this. Seeing and hearing none, I will now close the public portion of the hearing. Is there any additional comments or questions from members of the board? Seeing and hearing none, Richard would read the findings of the facts. Yes, I'll read the highlighted areas again. Brookings County Zoning Ordinance, Zoning Variance 2021 VAR 004, application for variance have been filed with the Brookings County Zoning Commission acting as the Brookings County Board of Adjustment, a copy of the application being attached here too. Such application being made by Old Tree Farms, LLC, by Frito, and Sonia Verpollen, 
regarding the following real property. The south 1,470 feet, of the southwest 1 fourth, except the south 295 feet, of the east 290 feet, 95 feet, of the west 1,248 feet in section 34, township 110 north, range 51 west, Volga Township, located at 46316 214th Street, Volga, South Dakota, 57071. After due notice of public hearing, have been held on the application on the second day of March, 2021. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number five, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further determines and condition this variance upon the following special conditions or safeguards. Contingent upon approval of a conditional use 2021 CU003. Letters from adjoining landowners stating they have no objections to the variance request. The Brookings County Board of Adjustment, at least two-thirds vote of its full membership, hereby grants the above petitioner a variance for the above described real property as follows. Allow an existing Class A CAFO dairy expansion to be approximately 1,665 feet from a well located in the northeast one-fourth of Section 4, Township 109 North, Range 51 West, and approximately 2,475 feet from a well located in the southeast one-fourth of Section 33, Township 110 North, Range 51 West. After this, this variance is specifically conditioned upon initial and continued compliance with all the conditions and safeguards in five above, and upon compliance and applicable and upon compliance with all applicable provisions of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. If approved, the Brookings County Zoning Director is authorized to issue any required building permits for construction consistent with the terms of this variance. This variance is not used within three years of the date granted. It shall be invalid, dated the second day of March, 2021. Everybody good with findings? Richard, would you call the vote? Vanderwall. Aye. Troyan. Aye. Erickson. Aye. Bartley. Aye. McHugh. Aye. Gatsky. Aye. Dietrich. Aye. Klein John. Aye. And Ford. Aye. Motion passes. Agenda item 2021 CU 003 Old Dre Farms LLC by Fredo and Sonia for Pollen have made an application 2021 CU 003 to the Brookings County Board of Adjustment for a conditional use Article 11, Section 11.01A Agricultural District Conditional Use Permit Number 11, Class A, B, C, and D Concentrated Animal Feeding Operations. The property is described as the south 1,470 feet of the southwest one-fourth, excluding the south 295 feet of the east 295 feet of the west 1,248 feet in section 34 Township 110 North Range 51W, Volga Township, located at 46316 214th Street, Volga, South Dakota, 57071. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Vanderwall. Second. Second by Gatsky. report please yes 20 Brookings County variants 2021 VAR 005 LLC by Frito and Sonia Verpollen have applied for variants to build the bank of the proposed new storage basin 100 feet from the adjoining property line the existing basins were constructed prior to the existing setback requirements Keeping the proposed storage basin in line with the existing basins will allow existing infrastructure to be used in the connection of the additional basin and utilize the existing, existing available space. Um, it was permitted as a Class B CAFO for 1,400 cows on April 7th in 1998. Um, prior to the current setback requirements, uh, past expansions were included from a Class B to a Class A to 2,500 animal units on April 5th, 2011 an expansion of a Class A to 3,155 animal units on January 3rd, 2017. 
Adjoining landowners were notified and have sent in written comments stating they have no objections to the variance request, which are attached. Letters were sent to the adjoining landowners, the Volga Township Chairman and Clerk, Oslo Township Chairman and Clerk, Brookings County Highway Department, and the Kingsbrook Kings, Kingsbrook Rural Water. Public notices were published in the Brookings Register on February 16th and 23rd, 2021, and the Volga Tribune on February 18th and 25th. Here's the variance application. A letter from the adjoining landowner stating they have no objections uh, with that Vanderwalls. Here's the site map showing the proposed site. The setbacks here is a 200 foot setback requirement. You can see the existing storage basins are within that area. This would the proposed pond or just keep it in line with that and that's where the asking for 100 foot from the edge of the pond back to the property line is um, the 100 foot variance is what they're asking for here's the beacon map showing the proposed location of the proposed storage pond sediment basin and that's what I'll have I was not able and did not go back and take pictures of that area um, the aerial pretty much speaks for itself so that's all that I have. Would the applicant come forward and clear? Uh, Frito Apollon. Sorry. Do you have anything to add to Richard's report? No. Okay. I'll now open the public portion of the hearing. Is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is for this? Mr. Chairman, just note the records that we received comment from the adjoining landowner stating they have no re objections to the variance request. Thank you. Seeing and hearing none, is there anybody in the audience or on the phone as opposed to this? Seeing and hearing none, I will now close the public portion of the hearing. Is there any additional comments or questions from members of the board? Seeing and hearing none, Richard, would you read the findings of the facts? Yeah. I'll read the highlighted sections again. Brookings County Zoning Variance 2021, Variance 005, application for variance have been filed with the Brookings County Zoning Commission, acting as a Brookings County Board of Adjustment, a copy of the application being attached here too. Such application being made by Old Tree Farms LLC by Frito and Sonia Verpollen regarding the following real property. The south 1,470 feet of the southwest one fourth, except the south 290 feet, 95 feet of the east 290 feet, 95 feet of the west 1,248 feet in section 34, Township 110 North, Range 51 West, Volga Township. Located at 46316 214th Street, Volga, South Dakota, 57071. After due notice, a public hearing have been held on the application on the second day of March 2021. Number one. Number two. Number three. <coughs> number, number five. Brookings County Board of Adjustment further determines and conditions this variance upon the following special conditions and safeguards. A, contingent upon approval of 20, conditional use 2021 CU003. B, letters from adjoining landowners stating they have no objections to the variance request. C, this will allow the sediment basins to be in line and utilize existing infrastructure and maximize the use of the available space. Brookings County Board of Adjustment, by at least two-thirds vote of its full membership, hereby grants the above petitioner a variance for the above described real property as follows. Allow an existing Class A CAFO dairy and expansion to construct the base of the additional sediment basin berm to be 100 feet from the adjoining property line. The variance is specifically conditioned upon initial and continued compliance with all the conditions and safeguards in five above. Upon compliance with all applicable provisions of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance, if approved, the Brookings County Zoning Director is authorized to issue any required required building permits for construction consistent with the terms of this variance. If this variance is not used in three years of the date granted, it shall be invalid. 
dated the second day of March, 2021. Everything look good? Richard, would you call a vote? Troyan. Erickson. Aye. Bartley. Aye. McHugh. Aye. Gatsky. Aye. Dietrich. Aye. Kleinjohn. Aye. Vanderwall. Aye. Ford. Aye. Motion passes. Moving on to agenda item number 16, department reports. Did I skip one? Okay, we, I got an email from. Hold up, Rich. Oh. Rich, Rich. Bye bye. We got a conditional oh. use. We got one left here. We got conditional use for the expansion. Three? Yep. Must have had one stuck together. My fault. We'll do this one more time. Agenda item 2021, variance 003. Conditional use. Sorry, there you go. There you go. Right there. Ah, uh, there we go. Agenda item 2021 CU003. Old Tree Farms LLC by Frito and Sonia Verpollen have made an application 2021 CU003 to the Brookings County Board of Adjustment for conditional use. Article 11, Section 11.01A. Agricultural District Conditional Use Permit Number 11, Class A, B, C, and D Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation. This property is described as the south 1,470 feet of the southwest one-fourth, excluding the south 295 feet of the east, 295 feet of the west, 1,248 feet in Section 34 Township, 110 North Range 51W, Volga Township, located at 46316, 214th Street, Volga, South Dakota, 57071. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Diedrich, second by Bartley. Richard Bajid, staff report. Yes, conditional use 2021 CU003, Old Tree Farms, LLC, by Frito and Sonia Verpollen, have applied for a conditional use, Brook, applied for a conditional use for Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. Article 11, Section 1101, our Agricultural District, Conditional Use, Number 11, Class A, B, C, and D, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operations, and also C, Section 22, Concentrated Animal Feeding Regulations, Section 22.01, Feeding regula Regulations on page 1, to expand a Class A concentrated CAFO from 3,155 animal units to 5,000 animal units for dairy cattle. An expansion of 1,845 animal units. The thing to remember here is that animal units is not the same as the actual num amount of numbers on site. They currently have 1,625 and 450 calves under 400 pounds at their existing operation. The proposed ex expansion would consist of the following breakdown. 2,500 mature cows, 1,300 heifers, and 500 calves below 400 pounds for a total of 500 animal units. The expansion would increase mature cows by 875 to 1,225 animal units. The replacement heifers by 800, which is 800 animal units. And the calves would be increased by 50 for 20 animal units. He is currently not raising his replacement heifers on site. They are currently raised off site. He would like to raise his replacements on site with this expansion. To accommodate the expansion, he would add to on to the east of the existing north freestall barn, add, add an additional bedding barn, bedding, bedded calf barn, a freestall barn to house the dry and close-up cows, a freestall barn to house the heifers and additional storage pond, sediment basin. Again, the dairy was permitted on April 7, 1998 as a Class B 1,400 cow site with four monitoring wells, which are still there. 
The Brookings County Planning and Zoning Commission approved expansion of its Class B to a Class A on April 5, 2011 for 2,540 animal units and an expansion of its Class A to 2,000 from 2540 to 3150 animal units on January 3rd, 2017. The dairy was permitted prior to the current setback requirements. It was granted variances this evening. Previously for the well and residents in the past expansions, it was granted variance this evening, 2021 variant 003 for a residence, variance 2021-004 for a well, and variance 2021-005 for a property line setback for the proposed new storage basin. Which we heard this evening. His nutrient management plan shows he exceeds the required acres to distribute the nutrients on, as it was in the engineer's report located in this report. And I can go over that in a minute. It is not located over zone A of the wellhead protection area or zone B, which is the remainder of the aquifer materials map, which is not in zone A. As noted in the engineer's report also, and the site is not located in the floodplain. The engineer's report was completed by Brian Fredrickson with the Code Environmental, and the conditional use application included in this packet contained the information required in Article 22, Section 2201, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation Control Requirements Number 8, information required for A and B concentrated animal feeding operations. Letters A through L were all included in the engineer's report for your review this evening and it meets all those requirements. The application does have road agreements on file with our office with the Volga and all Oslo townships. The zoning office has reviewed the above documents and made a visit to the proposed site. Letters were sent to the adjoining landowners, Volga Township Chairman and Clerk, Oslo Township Chairman and Clerk, the Brookings County Highway Department, and the Kingsbury, Kingsbrook Rural Water. Public notices were published in the Brookings Register on February 16th and 23rd, 2021, and the Volga Tribune on February 18th and 25th, 2021. Planning and Zoning Board has considered and incorporates these findings into number seven of the standards for conditional uses found on page 20, section 22, page 17 of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance for all permitted CAFOs in Brookings County. There's the conditional use application. Here is the proposed site plan showing the proposed barn expansion, the two, uh, the calf barn, two freestyle barns, proposed uh, additional sediment basin. There's another just proposed a sediment, proposed site plan with the uh, um, background of the farm aerial view of it showing the proposed barn addition, sediment pond, two barn, three barns. Proposed site letter from environmental, Dakota Environmental, which stated has all the requirements of section 22 there and goes over those. This is a legal description of the site and the site plan. Uh, this later on in the section, you noted the soil boring report on there. This is the soil boring numbers here on the site plan, which they reference Soil boring five seven. Um, eight six four five and seven. Those are the re soil borings where they're referenced to later on in this report. Goes through the calculation number of animals that you will be permitted for. Here is its nutrient management plan stated as acres, the, the amount produced and the amount required for the um, acres required for the amount of nutrient produced. This is a map showing the locations that are spreading agreements available for all of his nutrients on there. Here's his home base right here. So and he does have Current with the South Dakota Department of Environmental Natural Resources permit for that, dated December 15th, 2017, which is still valid. This is for the management for fly and order control. 
which is current with the South Dakota Department of Environment and Natural Resources with his CAFO permit, which is still a valid permit and a valid plan dated March 14th, 2011. goes over the setback information that we used previously for the variance requirements. Again, a proposed site plan with the aerial view. This is the information on the soils and the aquifer protection zone. This is a zone B in this area here, the yellow area. Here is the site right over there in the gray, which is sand and gravel greater than 100 feet below land surface. This is just a close-up area of the same, same map. This was the official aquifer's material map in Brookings County. You can see it in the white area. A little black square right there is where the site is. Here is the soil borings that I referenced earlier on the site map. This is a soil boring four recommendations there as noted this one is soil boring five soil boring six seven and eight this is just a floodplain map showing the Areas not in the floodplain, the dark areas right here are floodplain areas. The site is not in the floodplain. This is the same as the aquifer's material map, showing it's over here. It is out of the zone B area. This is the beacon map showing of the property. And just photos of the operation, again, showing the main driveway going up to the barn. Sign identifying that. This is the main entrance of the east driveway. This is just looking west from the main driveway on 214th, clear vision, building setback, nice clean operation there. This is the proposed barn addition lo located to the north barn. This is just on the west area looking north of the feed storage area. This is the west end of the property looking at the intersection of 463rd Avenue, which is a minimum maintenance road, and 214th Street, which goes by the front of his operation. Just looking west back on 214th from 463rd, and good clean view of that. And that's all that I have. Applicant, please step forward and clearly state his name. Hello, Fallen. <laughs> Do you have anything to add to Richard's report? No. Okay, well, with that, we'll open the public portion of the hearing. Is there anybody in the phone? or on the phone or in the audience that is for this. Mr. Chairman, just note that the adjoining landowners uh, voiced their approval of through their variance applications that they have no objections to the, to the conditional use and the expansion of his operation. Okay. Seeing none, is there anybody in the audience or on the phone that is against this? Seeing and hearing none, I will now close the public portion of the hearing. Is there any additional comments or questions from members of the board? Seeing and hearing none, Richard, would you read the findings of the facts? This being the first one, I'll read in its entirety this evening. Brookings County Zoning Conditional Use Permit 2021 CU003, an application for a conditional use permit having been filed with the Brookings County Zoning Commission. Acting as a Brookings County Board of Adjustment, a copy of the application being attached here too. Such application by Old Treat Farms, at least I was consistent there. LLC by Frito and Sonny Verpollen regarding the following real property. The south 1,470 feet of the southwest 1 fourth, except the south 295 feet of the west 1,248 feet in section 34, township 110, range 51 west, Volga Township. Located at 46316 214th Street, Volga, South Dakota, 57071. After due notice, a public hearing having been held on the application on the second day of March, 2021. 
Number one, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment hereby finds that it is empowered to grant such a conditional use under the following sections of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. Article 11, Section 11.01, A, Agricultural District, Conditional Use Number 11, Class A, B, C, and D, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation, and further finding that the granting of the conditional use will not adversely affect the public interest. Number two, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further finds and certifies that the following specific rules governing the conditional use requested have been complied with. Article 22, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operations, Section 22.01, Concentrated Animal Feeding Operations, Control Requirements, Number 8. Planning and Zoning Board has considered and incorporate these findings, Number 7, Standards for Conditional Use, found on page 20, Section 20, pages 17, 18, and 19 of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. of adjustment will change that to number three the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further finds that satisfactory provisions and arrangements have been made concerning the following were applicable a entrance and exits to property proposed structures are in with particular reference to automotive pedestrian safety convenience traffic flow control and access in case of fire or catastrophe the main entrance is off 214th Street secondary entrance and exit for agricultural machinery may also use 463rd Avenue B, off-street parking and loading areas were required with particular attention to items in A above with economic noise, glare, and other effects of the, special, of the conditional use on adjoining properties in the same district, none stated. C, utilities and refuge and service areas with reference to locations, availability, and compatibility. Um, dumpster service required for garbage disposal. Do you use a dumpster service now, Frito? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. E, screening and buffering with reference to type, dimensions, and character. Maintain existing shelter belts. E, signs of any proposed exterior lighting with reference to glare, traffic safety, economic effect, compatibility, and harmony with the properties in the district. 32 square feet sign allowed and any required safety signs for livestock operation and production. F, required yards and open spaces, none stated. G, general compatibility with adjacent properties and other properties in the district. Comprehensive plan met for the agricultural district. H, roads providing access to the property are adequate to meet the transportation demands of the proposed conditional use. The Board of Adjustment may require the applicant to enter into a written contract with any affected township or other government unit regarding the upgrading or continued maintenance of any roads or conditional use requested upon prior to issuance of a conditional use. Road agreements with Volga and Oslo townships are on file. I, any required notifications, law enforcement or fire department, none stated. J, any required safety inspections. Any inspections required by the South Dakota Department of Environment and Natural Resources for state CAPO permit. Number four, the Brookings County Board of Adjustment further determines and conditions this conditional use upon the following additional special conditions or safeguards. A, continued testing of four existing monitoring wells. The Brookings County Board of Adjustment, by at least two-thirds, by at least a majority vote of its full membership, hereby grants the above petitioner a conditional use for the above described property as follows. Conditional use permit number 11, Class A, Dairy. Concentrated animal feeding operation for expansion of its Class A dairy to 5,000 animal units, consisting of 2,500 mature dairy cows, 1,300 heifers, which are considered feeder cattle, and 500 calves below 400 pounds. This conditional use permit is specifically conditioned upon initial and continued compliance with all the requirements and conditions in three and four above, and upon compliance with all applicable provisions of the Brookings County Zoning Ordinance. The Brookings County Zoning Director, if approved, is authorized to issue and require any required building permits for construction consistent with the requirements of this conditional use. If this conditional use permit is not used within three years of the date granted, it shall be invalid, dated the second day of March 2021. Everything good?
Richard, would you call for a vote? Erickson. Bartley. Okay. Aye. McHugh. Aye. Gatsky. Aye. Spencer. Aye. Kleinjohn. Aye. Vanderwall. Aye. Troyan. Aye. And Ford. Aye. Motion passes. Moving on to agenda item number 16, department reports. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'd also like to introduce Todd Case from 1st District is on the phone, as far as I know. He, um, he sent me an email. He said that we could have some in-person training on a Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon or any time on a Thursday over the next couple of weeks. And he wanted to know if the board would look at their calendars and see, pick out a couple of dates and give them to Richard, and Richard could correspond with Luke and see if they could. So that would be within, looks like, uh, the next couple of weeks. I presume that's two weeks from today, and then a Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon or any time on Thursday. And we, uh, they would Mr. come Chair. down and we, we'd meet here and where we meet somewhere in this building and have zoning board training. Any comments? Morning or afternoon work better. It'd be training would last about an hour. He uh, says Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon, if it's going to be afternoon, okay, or yep. if it's going to be in the morning, it's going to be on a Thursday. What day are you looking at? I've got two two dates in, in this month. I can't. I won't be here on a Tuesday. Well, Tuesday we've got yeah, March ninth, sixteenth, twenty third, or the thirtieth okay. for Tuesdays. If I'd prefer the sixteenth and thirtieth, I'm teaching the other two days, Tuesdays. Or we have. Um, what about Thursday? Thursday the eleventh is open. Eighteenth is open, and the twenty fifth I'm teaching. What about the rest of you, gentlemen? I'm flexible. I'm teaching the 25th. You're holding the doggone cookies. You better pass them around. Everybody else got one left. I didn't. <laughs> Do either the, the eight, 11th or the 18th on yeah, Thursday yeah. sound good with everybody? I won't pay either day, but that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. We will. <laughs> the 11th works no, no, no. better? What about the 11th for people up front? I'm not available 11. So. March 11th is what we're looking at. That's next two, next Thursday. That's one date. All right, Richard, write down March 11th so you yep. can email Luke. And then they asked for a couple different dates so in case they can't do it on the 11th, what would work? Could I request reminder phone calls for that also? By all means. Uh, Mr. Hill, March, um, would have to be done in the morning, March 11th. There might be another conflict that day. Oh, yes. It ain't going to be March 11th. <laughs> and, I, and I am gone that day. So R Richard's gone that day, and me and Ray Lynn's gone that day. So I'm gone that day. You hey, Bob. Yes, yes, Mr. Cage. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Todd Case with the 1st District here in Watertown. It, it doesn't need to be in the next two weeks. If you want to push it out to three weeks, that's fine. I know um, Luke wanted just to have the opportunity uh, to sit down and, and, and do some training with the new board members before your next meeting. And uh, he thought, you know, he wants to let you guys drive the car on that. But basically, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday afternoons or th any time on a Thursday, he's available. I know he's got several topics that he wants to, to, to go over with you and some uh, changes in some case law that's been coming down the pike in the last year. So The 18th is okay. We'll be very responsive to whatever your needs are. I'm in care 16, 17, 18. Not really. The, the, the 25th would be also be a day that would not be available. How about the afternoon, the 24th, Wednesday afternoon? Just saying. Does that work for everybody? A second. Okay. 
Wednesday. The twenty Wednesday, the twenty fourth. In the afternoon. The, the week of the twenty second, I'm teaching. The whole week. Okay. The whole week. Okay. What about the thirty first then? I'm open otherwise. Or or the seventeenth. Seventeenth. St. Patrick's Day. Seventeenth. The week of the week of the fifteenth, I'm open. Thirty first still gets us before the next meeting. Yeah. Or. Wednesday afternoon on the 31st. And if you can't make the training, that's that's fine. You just don't get the 75 bucks. <laughs> oh. I don't get it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big 75, huh? <laughs> March, March 31st? Yeah, that's okay. Mr. Kays, it's looking like March 31st would be the main date. What time do you guys want to do it? Afternoon. One o'clock, two o'clock. What works better for? I think I think Luke's planning on maybe a, you know a couple hours because your brains can only tolerate as much as your bottoms. Well, let's plan for one. He can come down and eat at Nick's hamburgers at noon. Come over here and teach <laughs> from one to three, and then go back and be done by closing time in Watertown. Sounds good. You need a back update, or you think the thirty first will work? No, I'll I'll make it work. He'll make it work. Anything else from the first planning district? No, nope, nothing. You guys had a good meeting night. Thank you for kind of miss it. Thank you for attending. The other thing from my from from the county development side, if you want a COVID nineteen shot. Keep listening to the news. Depends on how old you are, of course. <coughs> but we're going to start knocking them out pretty fast. We're going to we're going to start releasing the uh, call-in numbers, and you call in, and if you meet that criteria, now they're they're going they're starting to go down to the parts where if you got high blood pressure or diabetes, or if you're like me and got out, got all that crap, they're going to start picking those guys off here pretty doggone soon. If you're a veteran. You're liable to be contacted through the Veterans Affair, uh, Veterans Administration, not through, not through our local people. So just, if you want a shot, that's fine. If you don't want a shot, that's, that's fine too. It's America. So, and that's all I got. Richard's got some other stuff, I think, from our office too. Uh, yes, next month in April, we start our meetings at 8 p.m., but we will probably still be starting earlier. We're going to be having a joint meeting with the City Planning and Zoning Commission that evening also. Uh, time yet to be determined, but usually we start those an hour before um, hand, but we'll know more in the next week or so what time that will start. So we'll have quite a few, as of now, we'll have quite a few items, so it could be a busy evening that evening. So, And just the training, and that's all that um, I've got. If you guys have any questions on your tablets for your new board members or anything, any questions or concerns, if or not staff reports not coming through on the on your tablets, get a hold of us, and we'll have our IT guys look at them. Or as you're reviewing them, you have questions, call into the office and um, ask. Tell us what your question is, and we'll answer it to the best that we can. So and winter is not over yet, believe it or not. I'm predicting snow in two weeks, oh. so take that to the bank. We've got we've got forms for everybody to sign this evening. It's um, conflict of interest forms and. For the three new board members, and we have new updated lists for everybody. Um, <coughs> so, an updated one, yes. And we got contact information from everybody for handing out to, and now that's all that I have. Adjourn. Motion to adjourn. No move. Motion by Diedrich. Second. Second by Bartley. Bartley. Aye. McHugh. Aye. Gatsky. Aye. Dietrich. Aye. Fine John. Aye. Vanderwall. Aye. Troyan. Aye. Erickson. Aye. And Ford. Aye. Motion passes. Meeting adjourned. Well, there answers the question I just had.